Yeah, uh, looks good. So the YouTube side is setting up and uh, we will wait a few seconds. Okay, it's uh, it's good now on YouTube side. So let me uh, start with a very brief introduction to Dr. Uh, Nai Bin Jia. So Dr. Nai Bin Jia is currently a lecturer and and uh, and chancellor's fellow at the University of uh, Strasbourg and Clyde. He holds uh, a dual bachelor degree, uh, the bachelor of science in mechanics and a bachelor of engineering in uh, computer, computer science. And also he has a PhD degree in fluid mechanics. So his pri primary research area is uh, fluid structure interactions. So with a specific focus on P phenomenon that lie in biology and the bio-inspired proportion and in the interaction, interaction that happens in boundary layer and interfaces. So his research has been published in um, a lot of top journals, including uh, Nature Communications, uh, Sci Science Advanced, Physical Revenue Letters, and the Journal of Fluid Mechanics. So today, uh, uh, Dr. Jia will introduce his recent work on fluid structure and structure structure interactions. And I beam, please uh, start your presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jen, uh, for the invitation. Uh, today, my, I will give a brief actually introduction to our recently study on fluid structure and structure structure interactions that happened uh, in space. Okay. Uh, today, I will give actually three topics um, uh, under this uh, uh, The first one is the drag reduction using air rings. Uh, there is a technique called air lubrication, uh, lubrication technology. Here, the first we can see here is actually the boundary layer. When flow past a uh, a solid structure, it will form a boundary layer, and the, then it forms drag due to viscosity. Uh, when this here, this is the attached point where the velocity is zero. But if we introduce some air, an uh, air layer to uh, just uh, above this uh, solid structure, then we can create actually uh, some slides here. This slide actually reduced the uh, shear and then reduced the drag, the structure suffered from the fluid. Uh, a general practice is to use hydrophobic surface just like this one to, uh, to form such a uh, air layer. Or in the uh, ship industry, people try to pump or inject air to the bottom of the ship and to create the air layer to reduce the ship drag. But for this kind of technique that people argued, because what the energy you save from the, this kind of um, lubrication is actually used to pump the air because pumping air to the bottom of the ship also cause uh, energy, cause the fuel so that this kind of technology is Still, uh, still, uh, still investigating for some better solutions. And our uh, practice or research is actually to exploring uh, a different way using the air lubrication technology. Uh, before I give the details of our study, I'd like to uh, introduce another background knowledge called contact angle persistences. Uh, Normally, when we discuss about a contact angle, that is, for, for example, this one, a droplet uh, sit on a fabric so that it forms a shape, a droplet. And here, we can mirror the uh, 
equivalent contact angle from this side or this side. This is the static condition. However, when we uh, make the surface with some angle, the droplet will slide. And in this case, it will form different actually contact angle from this side is called advancing contact angle. And uh, at the tail is receding contact angle. Uh, they actually has a range, not just a single value of the contact angle. This is happened uh, when the water droplet uh, in air. And our study is actually uh, put the hydrophobic surface and the water. When this, in this case, we painted an uh, area with uh, hydrophobic, super hydrophobic painting. And then we put some air to this surface. In this case, the air will form a bubble and stick on the hydrophobic surface. And all the area around it is actually water. And if we pump different amount of, we put different amount of water in under the hydrophobic surface, it will form bubbles at different shapes. But these bubbles, uh, even this one, very large bubble, it will not float uh, up. It will stay there. And we use this technique to actually create uh, the air rings we are studying here. Here is the cylinder, the rotating cylinder. And we put the stripe of super hydrophobic band on this cylinder so that the cylinder forms super hydrophobic bands and hydrophilic bands, super hydrophobic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, something like this. And then we put some airs into each section of this hydrophobic layers paintings so that it forms uh, bubbles on it and the bubbles will stay there. Actually, this is a uh, thread around the cylinder. So the real thing is, this is the photo taken from the, our experiment that we form the air rings on this cylinder. The next thing here is a video that we tested the stability of the air rings at a different rotating speed. This is 300 uh, round per minute and still uh, stable, 400 round per minute. Five hundred. Six hundred. Still, uh, the bubble still has no broken, but it you may see it's not that stable as a uh, low rotation speed, but the the area is still on this cylinder. Eight hundred. 900 round per minute. One thousand. One thousand one hundred. One thousand two hundred. Actually, with quite a large range of the rotation speed, the air rings keeps stable, and which makes it a uh, quite large uh, a plausible application that if we adopt this kind of uh, technique uh, in application or in practice, that is, it can reach up to 1,500 rounds per second but the air rings still there and no, not break up. Uh, that's the first thing that uh, we studied or we used uh, air rings for the drug reduction purpose. And our measurement shows uh, 
stable and up to 77.2% uh, drug reduction with this kind of uh, areas confined by this alternated super hydrophobic and uh, hydrophilic drugs. And this is, uh, the result is uh, published in Science Advances. And if uh, you are interested, you may look into this uh, paper. This is the first topic I'd like to uh, introduce to you. And now let's come to the second one. The second one is uh, duckling information swimming. I think that this one is quite an interesting one. Here we can, you can see uh, a duck, mother duck and uh, several ducklings following uh, her in swimming. Uh, this is uh, actually people can uh, observe this phenomenon in spring. And actually, uh, it's not our uh, st studying the ducks, ducklings information is, is it actually a long history. Uh, people find that uh, from the biology uh, aspect, it can be explained with uh, imprint, which is uh, animal behavior. When the duck is hacked from egg, and then even you put you put uh, any object, the duck follow well, the ducklings will follow it. That is from the biology aspect. And the people also uh, explored it uh, from hydrodynamic aspect, that is uh, from the underwater part uh, to see how the uh, flow under the water surface and how it can benefit the ducklings in swimming. Uh, here, actually, this one for the ducks swimming that is on the water surface. Here we have the surface. Uh, the the uh, interface between air and water, and there's a wave, water wave on it. So uh, previous study actually ignored the effect uh, of the uh, water waves, and our study is exploring how the water wave can uh, benefit or influence the behavior of the ducklings. Um, before that, uh, I'd like to first introduce the some background about the uh, drugs. This is from the um, study of the uh, of people when study the vessels or ships, and they find when the ship speed actually uh, increase, they can get the total resistance consists of three parts. The first part is air resistance. Second is well making resistance, and third is Viscose resistance. Uh, these three parts uh, consist of uh, total resistance of a ship or actually any object that is moving on the water surface. Uh, this is a detailed uh, diagram of each part. The, one, uh, the study tackling from hydrodynamics aspect is actually studied from this part. The, the viscose part. And how we wish to actually study the effect of the wave that is also a part of the uh, total drag uh, object is moving on the water surface. Actually, from this figure, we can see the wave making resistance is actually takes quite a lot of part when the shift speed is high. Even if it's at a low speed, it also takes uh, important role in it. That is uh, the purpose of the background that we wish to study uh, if the wave can play a role in ducklings swimming. Uh, people will generally actually have, uh, sometimes people just ignore the wave because they feel uh, the wave itself is looks so uh, not that obvious. But the web itself is actually plays important factor when uh, some object moving on water surface. Here is that movie, uh, a video. This is the championship final in the gentleman's 50 meter batch throw. From right to left, top to bottom, John Arrington won, Cole Craig in two. 
Jeff Lowe, Dennis Siaka, this one. Three, Austin, Austin Idol, only four. Tommy Sacco in five. Jay Silva in lane number six. Hill Taylor with those tremendous underwaters in seven. He's going to just go for the underwater here and take the DQ. And in lane number eight, that is Jason Bergstrom. But look at Hill Taylor just going for it. Wow. Hill you may see that this this guy, this uh, Taylor, he keeps swimming in water without uh, come out of the water. Actually, he's disqualified. Uh, but anyway, you can see he reaches the other side much earlier than the rest of the uh, people. That is, let's go back to this part. You can see uh, this is the other people who swim on the water surface will actually uh, suffer from the wave making resistance, while he only feels the viscosity resistance. That makes the difference for the for this one actually swimming. And here is uh, his result: twenty three point ten seconds. This record is actually faster than the world record. Uh, anyway, it's disqualified because he did not come up after uh, 15 meters uh, of the initial start point. Uh, with this video, act, it shows the surface of the wave, wave, is wave making or the wave actually consume a lot of energy and also produce a lot of drags to the object swimming on the surface. Okay, the other one is, now we are discussing some object swimming on the water surface. Then there is some, uh, when we see this kind of, uh, such as ship that's moving on the surface, this wake has a pattern called Kelvin wake pattern. This pattern has a very interesting uh, property. The first one is it has a fixed angle if we line this divergent wave in a line, then it forms an angle called uh, Kelvin angle. Here, the degree is fixed no matter how fast the ship is moving, uh, once it's moving faster than, the, uh, sorry, no matter how the ship is moving, the degree is fixed at a uh, half degree is fixed at 19 degree and 28 uh, seconds. Then it forms two kinds of wave. The side one called divergent wave and the backward one called transverse wave. This is the wave that will always generate it when an object is moving on the water surface. And for this one, the divergent wave, it has a Wave learns just uh, uh, connecting to the speed, no matter the, the size or other uh, parameter of the object moving on the surface. This is uh, the property that we will use later in our study. Now let's come to the dark. Here is a photo I found on the internet that shows the wake of the dark. This is the dark. This is the diverging wave it generates. And here is this big part is the, is the transverse wave that generated by this dark. Our question is, how will the ducklings perform in the wake of the mother duck? Let's first see this one. If a duckling that swims on a still water. Here, its body and the water will suffer. Uh, here we, we assume it's symmetric. Then the body is actually suffers some uh, symmetric pressure along its body. When it is sit on a wave, it has actually two. Uh, we can see in at least two uh, position that here for this one. Uh, the trough is here, the pig is on this position, and then this duck will actually suffer a total net force 
on to uh, towards the left. Well, on this side, if the duck sit on the wake in this position, and the turtle net force will actually push the duck forward. For this one, we can consider the duck is riding the wave. The actual condition is actually uh, even complex because when the mother duck generates some wave, well, if we put a small duck on uh, the duckling on the water surface, it also generates the water wave. The difference is maybe the duck, the, the mother duck, well, the wave height is bigger. The ducklings generate the wave with a smaller amplitude. Mm. But the wave learns, as we showed here with this equation, the wave, the wave learns keeps the same only related to the velocity. So once these two mother duck and the ducklings, they're moving at the same speed, the wavelengths keep the same. The difference is just uh, the uh, amplitude of the wave. So if we post these ducklings at some uh, position so that these two waves will uh, superposed into a even large uh, wave amplitude, which means it will actually generate even uh, larger uh, drag due to the, which we call the wave-making uh, resistance or the wave-making drag. This, in this case, it will generate uh, even larger uh, drag. On the other side, if we put them into some out of phase position, then the wave will cancel each other in part so that it will reduce the total uh, wave, the, after the small uh, duckling, which means the wave will be uh, reduced and uh, partially canceled, and the wave making resistance will be reduced. The drag, the small duck uh, fields will also be uh, reduced. And this is our simulation uh, running uh, with that panel method uh, algorithm. Here we put these small ducklings just behind the mother duck, but at this position. And you can see this uh, contour plot is the amplitude of the, of the wave. So at this position, all the waves are increased in fact. While if we just uh, put it backward about uh, half the wavelength, around half of the wave, then we can see that the small ducklings the wake is completely different from the left uh, plot. This is because in this position, the wave generated by the ducklings actually canceled part of the wave generated by its mother. So that here the drag actually increased while here the drag is reduced. That is, uh, this is just a one single duck, single duckling. Sure, we can put even more. That here we put one, two, three, four, five, six. We put uh, a lot of ducklings just behind the mother duck, and then we can find uh, optimized position as shown here. In this plot, this just uh, comes to an uh, in-file uh, uh, arrangement and the ducklings feels the uh, drag reduction due to the wave interaction or wave superposition. And in this study, uh, we find the wave riding and the wave passing principle that can be used to reduce the wave drag and improve the locomotion performance of ducklings. Uh, this result was published uh, last year in GFM Rapids and it was also selected as the uh, uh, to, uh, focus on fluids. So that if you are interested, you may go to GFM website to read the paper. Okay. The third topic, uh, the third research I'd like to introduce is actually uh, for the previous two is uh, flow structure interaction. Well, the third one is 
uh, purely strap structure interaction. That is adherence strength manipulation manipulation using micro vibration. Uh, this is actually comes from uh, uh, a thinking from uh, Dr. Lang Chuan Shui, uh, who is our uh, who is the first author of this research. That hate the tape that people when when actually we use it almost every day. Uh, if we put a tape to some object, it's actually very easy, and we do not need to take quite uh, effect to uh, do not need to a uh, large force to make it uh, stick to the object. However, if we want to uh, peel this tape off of a surface, it's generally not that easy. You may need to move quite slow so that it will not uh, residue uh, stay. The tape will not uh, leave anything on the surface. Otherwise, uh, it may leave some mark on it. So that when you uh, peel a uh, tape, you will, it will cut you much, much larger force than you uh, put it on the surface, stick it on the surface. Here, the hypothesis is like this. If we can, actually we can. If we put a tape on the surface, it's easy with a quite small uh, force. But if we repair uh, it, it will need a large force. And if we, if we stick them together again, and actually uh, peel it again. Then repeat this process, actually it creates some uh, asymmetric, which means that the net, the net force in this cycle is towards the upward. The network, uh, the net force of this cycle is upward. And with this kind of force is up. Uh, we can actually pull this object up. Uh, this is the hypothesis actually uh, Dr. Lang Chen uh, think for, as he said, uh, maybe two years, but he lacked some uh, experiment evidence to prove it. Uh, after he told me about this one, I find that I have everything in my lab to carry out such an experiment to verify if this hypothesis is uh, established or not. Here's the experiment, quite simple. We have a speaker uh, here. This is a speaker, we put it uh, upside down so that it towards the uh, ground. And on the surface, we 3D printed a platform so keep this, to keep this uh, surface flat. On the surface, we put a uh, a thin layer of, of tape, double side tape. And then this is a clipper. We have a, we have a web generator and an amplifier to drive the speaker. Now we turn the speaker on. The clipper stays there. Once we turn off the sound here, once we turn off the sound, the clipper dropped off. Turn off, and the clipper turn off. That is the uh, first uh, verification of the hypothesis, and which encourage us. Okay, this is this hypothesis established, and we carried out our study with this one. This one is actually much, much complex than the previous one, the uh, principal uh, verification design. For this one, we, uh, we use some glasses, we fold with PDMS, which is, can be widely assessed and uh, using a glass uh, base so that we can film from the bottom to see the contact of the solid structure of the glass and the softer structure, the PDMS. And we use a force sensor to measure the force. And we use some uh, laser displacement sensor to measure, to confirm and measure the uh, vibration and the display at the occasion amplitude. 
and then we get this get this false uh, plot. Here we can see that we can see a large area where the adhesive uh, adhesion force actually increased quite a lot, and also some area here where the force drops to zero. Here is the uh, hesitosis uh, loop and a uh, cycle load. When the, when the solid structure comes to the uh, tape or the soft adhesive surface, it's like this with quite a small uh, work that needed. When we pull these two parts apart, a large work are needed. So this asymmetric will actually generate the force. And the force we married here is actually increases with the actuation amplitude at a fixed uh, vibration frequency until it reaches a region where the elastic wave, uh, the repelling of, of the crack speed is greater than the visco than the elastic wave that it comes to a uh, limitation of this the, the maximum force. And actually our experiment shows a force drop at, a, at this point. That is, uh, comes from our experiment that studied how the small, this kind of vibration loop can control the adhesive of the two solid uh, two solid structures, and we also did some uh, prototype to test this principle. These three are uh, three small uh, speaker that is also driven by our uh, signal generator. And on the top of this speaker, we put a double side, uh, the weak double side tape, and it sticks on it when vibration is up. When we turn off the vibration, it drops off. It also happens from the side. Yeah, we, this is three speakers with uh, double tapes on them. Uh, this result, this study is actually uh, published in 2020, just after the uh, lockdown. The enhancing uh, uh, strength manipulate, manipulation using micro vibration. And it can, our result shows it can enhance by 77 times, or it can be weakened to zero, just at the, uh, adjust the vibration frequency and amplitude. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, funny agency and uh, uh, universities that support my research work. Thank you for your uh, attention. That's the end of my uh, talk. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jia. It's a very uh, interesting three uh, topics, and uh, this is my first time to to hear about so you. You you can you can actually use vibration to to change the adhesion force. It's a very interesting topic. So okay, so uh, uh, if uh, we have a question from our audience, so audience can unmute yourself and ask a question directly to Dr. Jia. Well, maybe I can get started. Uh, thank you very much, Lam Bing. Uh, it is a very interesting talk uh, about the ducklings. I, I, I believe my son can even enjoy the talk. <laughs> Uh, so my first question, in fact, is about the uh, the air ring. So for your first topic, uh, so you try to uh, do some faster rotating and the slower rotating, right? For your uh, yeah. for the road, right? So I'm just curious how 
how the uh, air, uh, the the air bubble can uh, can stay near the like a rotating ring. So why the 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 air don't want to ex escape like a, uh, or more like a uniformly distributed inside of the tube. So what's the reason for that? The reason is uh, here. Actually, we we painted the cylinder not uh, uniform hydrophobic. We just right. put it, uh, a band of hydrophobic and a band leave it empty, which is a uh, anonym. I think it's hydrophilic, and then a band of hydrophobic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, so that here. Uh, due to the this kind of advancing contact angle and uh, receding contact angle, this uh, has sisters that even we 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 uh, actually uh, put some air on the surface because it's hydrophobic and the water is actually attract the air right. and the air stay there here. This is the upper bounder. This is the lower bounder and the the float have to drill this kind of different shapes. But due to the uh, persistence, the bubble will not float. It will stay there. And for this one, it's the limitation that if we put even more air in it, it may float up because it exceeds the, the limitation. And we find that even with uh, quite a lot of air in it, not to try the limitation or the, the boundary, then it, it keeps uh, stable. And even we rotated it with quite a high uh, speed. It's just to show some uh, instability, some waves on it, but the air still keeps there. Yeah. But, but you say, you just mentioned you want to put some air on top yeah. of the surface, but how you can control the air can stay there? How, how you, how you put the air? Yeah, how you can put the air on top of this kind of rotating road? Okay, it's a uh, pump <laughs> before it start to rotate. Uh, it's stay there. We pump the uh, air on it, uh, and then okay, you just uh, pump the air inside of the 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 tube. So, uh, uh there are... we we use another actually we use another tube to to reach this here and put. Okay some air to this one, to this place, then uh -huh. because it's hydrophobic and it's in the water, it will attract the air. So the air will spread around it and form this air ring. Oh, then, so you can... okay. Yeah, we go here one by one, so they were all filled with air. With a oh. syringe, we can control the wall, air volume. Oh, I see, I see. So what's the thickness of the air, uh, air layer you can, you can maintain on the surface? Uh, that's actually, uh, I can't remember the, the detail number, but you may see the shape, something like this. Okay. So what's the uh, resolution? I mean, what's the scale bar for this picture? Like a uh, micrometer or a centimeter? It's, I, I think it's a millimeter to millimeter. millimeter. It, it's so not that wide, it, it's big wide. If it's a small, you may see a, a even rounder one because of the surface tension. Here, it, the, the, the bubble is relatively large. Okay. <laughs> so you have to rotate, right? What, what happens if you don't rotate? It's a word not. <laughs> If we don't rotate, it keeps here, uh, then you cannot measure the force. Okay. We rotate so we can measure the force, we can find uh, how, how this kind of structure can benefit in drag reduction. Can you generate a flow? For example, you, 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 you generate a flow from um, uh, top my button to up and to see if we we'll, if we generate a shear, if this can, uh, actually, it will form some, some, some rotation. I think it's sorry, it's not that accurate. 
but it will generate instability and some rotation. Just uh, yeah, if we it, generate rotation, the force actually the shear stress is along the interface. So maybe this can stabilize the bubble. But if you generate a, a flow ver on vertical direction, I'm not sure if the, the, the structure can still stay there. Or yeah, you're right. Have to that's, make the, the that's shear stress. A, that's actually, the, the limitation from the previous one from this one. If if people even try, if they can put hydrophobic surface on the bottom of a ship, and then the bubble will soon be uh, washed off, and people yeah. have to pump uh, pump air to the bottom. Uh, no matter it's hydrophobic or not, but people keep uh, pumping air to it, which means the all the energy is saved due to the uh, re drag reduction will be actually uh, consumed by the pump itself. So people argue if this uh, effective way or not. Uh, but this one is in the flow direction. Our exploration is just uh, proposed a different uh, idea actually utilizing the air liberation that people have actually not uh, proposed before. The, the, okay. Okay. So, so you're... Yeah. You, in this setup, all the shear stress is uh, just a parallel uh, along the, the interface of the bubble. So I, I, yeah. I suppose this may be stabilized the system. Yes, that's actually we create some, some we can consider an infinity loop of the air rings or the airs. So we do not need to actually fit or add air to it. And the air will not escape. That's the, the, the feature of this kind of uh, air ring design. Yeah, makes sense. It's different the setup. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And my second question is about your second topic. So you talk about the uh, the formatting, like uh, swimming. Yeah. So you have a picture shows the uh, the uh, enhancement of the magnitude and also re reduction of the magnitude when you do the wave like uh, overlap, right? So I'm I'm just curious. Yes, this picture. So is it from your uh, analytical uh, analysis or it's more like a simulation, like uh, some types of CFD simulation? Uh, this kind of simulation, this is uh, because we, well, we, we put here and using a kind of method, uh, method that calculates the waves, uh, actually mm -hmm. the code is for ship. So that this is from Dr. Jimin Yuan's uh, research that the, using this one to calculate the, the amplitude of the wave, the water surface elevation, so that you can see the interaction between, uh, so we actually we see the difference between, just that we move this duckling a bit, we can see quite different wave pattern. I see, and I... For this one, this is just a simple uh, explanation of the concept of this uh, research or the idea, but, the ducting is not just a 2D shape, it's three-dimensional, so it will become even complex. Right, if it's a simulation result, then, uh, I mean, the color is the, the displacement, it's, it's kind of, uh, I, I'm not sure, so what color, so intuitively we can understand this is types of like a wave propagation, and it seems the color shows the magnitude of the wave. But yes. in terms of simulation, I, I mean, I don't know what kind of quantity we can uh, dump out to uh, get this uh, kind of uh, data. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I think you're right. That uh, this is just the, the, the relative magnitude so that we can see the pattern. That's one thing uh, maybe uh, anti our intuition is, for example, here we have a ship. And if we stand on it, the wake pattern keeps unchanged. It's not, if we stay stay on it, and uh -huh. we see it on some shape, the wave just like this. And okay. the, yeah, it will, uh, we, we see that if we stand on the bank, we see this wave propagate. But if we stand on the ship, it keeps the same shape and even the same angle, no matter how fast you, uh, this, 
this shape moves. That's the, so the Kelvin. So either stays the same. Yes, and the, the, wave, the wavelengths just uh, connect to the velocity. So that here, the, the, main, the key is to see the difference. Uh, sorry, I removed the, 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 the legend bar, but you can find it from, the, from this paper. This, uh, uh, yes. Yes, we, we, we wish just to uh, actually exhibit the difference between the, these two positions. You can see it's quite different. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is very interesting. Thank you so much for the uh, further explanation. Um, I have a question. I... Please. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Ah, okay, good. Uh, sorry, I missed the beginning of your uh, presentation, uh, but I, I was able to attend the third part about the adhesion. And I have a question regarding the, the state of the surface, because you have given some uh, conclusions on the effect of vibration on the adhesion strength, but what about the surface uh, state? So it's roughness, for example, does it compromise your, your uh, uh, conclusions, you think? What, you mean the first one, second one? Second one? Uh, on the, the third one, one the other Haitian, yes. other Haitian yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, so Michini want to know if your, your conclusion is depend on the material, for example, the surface roughness or or the, the conclusion is general or just uh, depend on the, the, the roughness of material or kind of thing? Yes. I, I think that the, the conclusion is somehow related to the material because the adhesive here is not that strong. We tried a 3M double tape, all diff many different tapes. And we find that if it's itself is strong, too strong, the double tape is too strong, then we cannot actually mirror the the mirror the, the force or observe the changes because itself is too strong. The, the kind of vibration control may not that uh, obvious. But here we see the PDMS. Actually, the this is not PDMS, another tape, uh, PVC or some other tape that we generally use this one on our car dashboard to, to, to hold the, the phone sometimes, empty, sleepy pad. This is cut from that. So uh, at least uh, two different uh, material work can work under this principle. Another question is, our structure has no microstructure. This one is coasted flat and the glass is just uh, with some curve so that we can reduce the, the total force. We can observe the difference and we can uh, see the, to create, make it easy to, to, to peel and uh, adhere them together. Both of the structure are actually uh, smooth. No micro, uh, that's no, uh, not like the, the other uh, structure that you need some microstructure to control the adhesive. Here we just use the vibration and the both okay. the surface. Uh, and, and your next slide on 42, I think it's just 42. What, which one? So this next, is 41. Next one. Yeah, the next one. So, so when you when you observe different behavior, when you increase the actuation amplitude, and you observe two different behavior, is it about the same? Because at some point, uh, the uh, pull off force remains relatively constant, and or or it can also decrease again with the actuation amplitude. Or are those corresponding to the same experiment? Uh, yes, all the experiments carry out with oh, this. Okay. We just, uh, uh, all what we do in our experiment is we change the actuation or the vibration amplitude of these two speakers so that they vibrate at the same phase, just like a bridge to, to force this uh, plate to vibrate. And we use a laser to monitor the vibration amplitude to ensure that it's uh, to ensure or to the vibration value is what we expected. This is the actuation amplitude. 
and the frequency is generated from our uh, signal generator. So we generate yeah. some uh, sign uh, signal and then put it to the speaker and then mirror everything here. Yes, uh, but what is the difference of, I mean, why, why is that huge difference in the second slide? Uh, uh, which the one? one with the curve, 42. Yeah, this yeah. one. Why, why, why would it be different? I mean, the, the difference is huge on this curve between different points, you see? At, for yeah. example, uh, actuation yeah. amplitude, uh, 100 micron. Okay, uh, here's, uh, here's an explanation actually from, uh, at least uh, my understanding from uh, Dr. Lang Chen, that we consider, uh, here we have a uh, top, maybe the soft part of this tape, and then we have a rigid part of the tape. Once we put them together, okay, and then we peel it up, we actually have a crack tip here. Okay. The crack actually propagate yeah. with a speed of V. And there's another speed called VC. This is the elastic wave propagation speed. And once this speed is smaller than the uh, VC, actually this is there's a, a boss curve, something like this. This is the VC. That when the travel, this traveling wave V, is smaller than we see. It's almost a million or have some pattern. Once it exceeds the VC, it means the crack propagation speed is beyond the elastic wave speed. The force, the performance is different. So that it, the theory here creates some different point. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, maybe I can ask uh, uh, another question. So about the, the darkening. So, mm -hmm. so when you set the system to consider the enhancement of the wave or um, the wave reduction, so you you consider the uh, or the the darkening have the same speed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so so this this mean if the 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 baby darkening is smart enough, uh, it will find the right position to, to save, with, save the energy, right? Yes, actually uh, it's more automatic in fact, uh, because we find that, uh, sorry, here we, we find some sweet point for this one. This is the most uh, simple way without considering the wave uh, superposition or interaction, if a duckling sitting here or somewhere around here, it will have the maximum uh, push force so that it can, or if we ignore other force, at least we consider the contribution of the wave, then once it reaches the maximum the position where the wave force contribute the maximum thrust, it will accelerate to somewhere yeah. that actually uh, may, it may make it, may, may it forward to somewhere and reduce the thrust until a balance reach, then it will stay there. So this distance, this distance to find the right position will depend on how fast the, the, the um, mother dot darkening how fast the, the, the group moving and also the, the, the size of the re relative size, right? Um, it's more, the, the I think, yeah, yeah, yes, I think you're right. It's really the speed and the size, but the speed may be more essential somehow. Okay, okay. It's, is this similar as the bird fly? Uh, I believe, uh, yeah, it somehow have the share the similar phenomena, but the 
principle or underlying is actually uh, a bit different. Some others also explain it uh, in a way using a uh, vortex, just to study the underwater part that is here. Yeah, we are studying the, the effect of the wave just on the surface. Someone studied the underlying part, the wake and the wave and the vorticities, how they influence it. Uh, but for this one, I think uh, it's a bit dif it's still a bit different uh, than the birds because for the birds part, uh, yeah, the phenomenon yeah, is so... The, the darkening is trying to ride the wave. Um, maybe the, the 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 bird is trying to ride the the uh, vortex, right? Yeah, yeah, ride the vortex. Yes. Yeah, that kind. Uh, yeah. But they share the similar phenomena. So the underlying principle is that one is what it is, and this one, uh, for the surface part, uh, it's a wave. And also, someone argued if the wave can can produce uh, enough thrust, or comparing to the under, underwater part, the drags, viscosity drags, and uh, the vorticities. And I think that uh, because the drag, the all the uh, waterfalls is actually they have feather, they have a lot of toys that to reduce the viscosity drag just uh, like the hydrophobic surface. Okay. Yeah. Okay, depending on the time, then we were uh, in here today. So if we have uh, uh, other questions from our audience, you can uh, contact uh, Dr. Jia directly. Uh, his contact information is on our website. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you, Nabin. Thank you, Nabin. Then we're in the here.